people come up and say, did you do this? Uh, would you work with this group? I said, I don't remember. Well, I saw your name on the album. Then I did. You know, that's because right. you work so much, you have no idea. The studio played in 1999. They would, if they're not playing all the time, they would need to do what we never needed to do, was practice. All the time you're practicing while being paid. It's funny, Earl and I were talking one time, and like, you couldn't judge anybody by how much they were working, because everybody's working all the time. You had to just go by how much work you turned down. Most of us were so fortunate to have been in at the, the, the original beginnings of rock and roll. For Christ's sake, I made more money playing rock and roll than I ever made playing jazz. There was one point in the mid-60s that I was making more money than the president of the United States. I remember you, I used to kid Carol. I said, you, know, you realize, Carol, if I got a divorce, and you, we could get married, and what a year we'd have of money. Between all your money and my money, we'd be killing everybody. Killing each yeah. other. This is where we did Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr. We did everybody in there. It's just an amazing place. In my particular case, I bought an incredible mansion in Hollywood. I had a magnificent yacht. I had a gorgeous Rolls Royce. But out of nowhere, I had a wife who all of a sudden declared I want a divorce. What? What are you talking about? I just went for a sandwich and it. It's like impossible to believe. And in order for her to get paid off, you sell everything you own. I had 170 something gold records, had to sell them all. The house was sold for a third of what it was worth. I had to let the yacht go. The yacht was repossessed. Never had anything repossessed in my life. It's just a shame to get wiped out that seriously. I had been working with John Denver almost five grand a week for almost 10 years. And all of a sudden, that job ended. Terrible, terrible thing to have to go through. I mean, it's you certainly uh, in the realm of suicide, you certainly think about it. I was working in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I was a security guard, plain and simple. Here I went from <laughs> all this money and this magnificent estate and everything else involved, and all of a sudden I was reduced to living in a closed closet, came out of about 23 rooms in Hollywood, and it was like the end of the world. This was Gold Star. So this is it, this is what's left. And it was an amazing time, and it was such a historical place. They had a lot of first time big hit people come here and make their records. Cross Street, we recorded the Captain and Tennille doing Love Will Keep Us Together. Boy, they had a number one. It was record of the year that year. It was my last record of the year. I had heard that things were picking up again, you know, 82, 83, something like that. And then I was also getting a few calls. All of a sudden, I was working again. One of the great highlights was when I was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So in the year 2000, me and Earl Palmer were both inducted. You know, Earl was just, I can't thank him enough. Earl recommending me in the beginning, he made a name for myself. It, was, it really was that simple. You know, I've always said, if you love your work, it's not work. You know, we loved our work, man. That's how we could work day and night, because we loved it. <laughs>